Hello friends, this video on Thermodynamics Part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched Part 1 to Part 23. Thermodynamics says that the entropy of a system is always, always increasing. That's what the second law of thermodynamics says. We'll take some examples. In this case, for example, this is my bus. So in this bus, what I did was I had this petrol, a diesel. I converted this into uh, heat and then do a uh, mechanical work. So in this case, if you see the entropy increase, the randomness increase, it was uh, maybe a liter of petrol and this a lot of heat emitted out, it moved. So all these things led to increase in the entropy of the system. Also, if you see the combustion reactions of the uh, petrol, there is an entropy increase. If we take here also the ice, and if you keep the ice, this will get warmed up, right? It will become water. So entropy of the system will also increase. If you see the smoke, if you have a smoke, you do smoke, anything you do or smoke, gas you have, it expands on its own. The entropy is random synergies, right? Because if this gas is put in this small box, the entropy is less. The moment it is out, the entropy increases. Coins, if you have these coins in this structured way, you just uh, take this coin in your hand and uh, just drop it and you will see that it will come in some shape like this. It will not be in the order way. This is the order with the less entropy. Order. Just you take this uh, in your hand and just uh, throw from uh, throw in the table from feet or something. So naturally you will see that it will get some, some random shape. So system wants to be random and that's why entropy increased everywhere. You may say that in this case uh, we got this ice and to make this, when you make this ice from water, you have decreased the entropy, right? But that is not the case because see, to make ice from water, we generally use refrigerator. So in refrigerator, we provide electrical energy that gets converted into heat energy that is uh, given out uh, by the refrigerator. So end of the day, if you see, uh, if you add all these things, the electrical energy to heat energy and all, you'll see that even if you make ice from water in refrigerator, you are end of the day increasing the entropy of the universe. So the entropy of the universe is always increasing. That's what the second law of thermodynamics says. That you may be scared. I mean, entropy is always increasing. What if? Uh, what is the point? What is the? Will it always increase? Uh, there are a lot of uh, stories going on. This there are scientists who claim that a point will come where the universe will stop, and that uh, uh, they call it as entropy dead. Uh, where everything will be in equilibrium. See now, this we feel the ice because there's a temperature difference between the ice and the normal room temperature, right? And the the whole idea of how this combustion works is because there's a temperature difference between the uh, uh, heat emitted by uh, what do you call it, the fire and the room temperature. What if due to entropy? No, the entropy is all equilibrium. Everything is all. Uh, I mean, everything which is at the equilibrium level. And then they say, they claim that uh, the earth will stop, the universe will stop, and there will be entropy dead of the earth. Anyway, those things will not discuss now. Uh, you can Google more on that. Where they say that, uh, they speculate that this thing will happen because of the entropy of the system always increasing. But that will happen maybe billion years after or from today. So we should not worry a lot about that. So total entropy, as I told, the reason why we studied entropy was we wanted to find the spontaneity of the reaction, right? So to find the spontaneity of the reaction, we have to find the total entropy. Please note, we deal with total entropy here. We don't uh, uh, need only the entropy of the chemical system. We need the total entropy of the chemical system and its surrounding, right? So if the, to if the total entropy is greater than zero, I say the, the process is spontaneous. Total entropy is zero. I say the system is in equilibrium. If the total entropy is less than zero, I say that the process is non-spontaneous. So in the next few slides will tell you how to find the total entropy of the system. A little difficult, but we'll explain how to find that. But before uh, going to, I mean, before finding the total entropy of the system, uh, we'll find the C. Total entropy is nothing but entropy of system 
plus entropy of surrounding. So let's first find the entropy of system. Then we'll find the entropy of surrounding. So for entropy of system, we talk about absolute entropy. So the absolute entropy it all depends on the mass of the system. The bigger the mass, the more is the entropy. The molecular structure of the system, right? How it is structured, uh, whether they have this uh, lattice uh, energy uh, bonding, lat lattice crystal kind of thing, or they have this hydrogen bonding, or there is no bonding altogether. It also depends on the temperature and pressure. You increase the temperature here, uh, the, the entropy increase, increase the pressure here, the entropy decrease. So it all depends on all these values, right? So let me repeat and the mass. The more the mass, more the entropy, the structure, the molecular structure, the temperature and the pressure. So all these are the factors on which the absolute entropy. Let's take one example on entropy and the Gibbs energy thing. The question says for the oxidation of iron that is the rusting of iron actually, the entropy change is 549.4 joule per Kelvin per mole at 298K. In spite of negative entropy change in this reaction, why is this reaction? So the reaction for this is if you have iron, you oxidize this, it gives Fe, 2, 3, balance this. This is my balanced reaction. This is my solid, this is my gas, and this is also my solid. This is a rustic of iron exam, uh, equation we have. And it says that delta S is my delta F of the system. Delta S of the system is minus 549.4 that is negative but still it is font is why the crux here is we never talk about delta s of system we always talk about change in entropy total and that is nothing but change in entropy of the system plus change in entropy of surrounding this is something we know is minus 549 kilojoule sorry joule per Kelvin per mole. But this is something we don't know. So let's try to find. This guy is nothing but, let's find this one. Delta S of surrounding is nothing but delta H by T. Correct? So this becomes minus of this. This becomes minus of minus 160 8 into the power 3 joule right per mole by T. T is what? 298 Kelvin. 298. You saw that this comes out to be 5530 joule per Kelvin per mole. This is delta S of surrounding. I have to find delta S total. So let's find what the value of delta S total. It comes out to be delta S of system that is minus 549.4 joule per Kelvin per mole plus this guy surrounding 5530 joule per Kelvin. So if you add this, you get 4980.6 joule per Kelvin. So you see the whole value is positive. Delta S total is positive. And that's why this reaction is spontaneous. Correct. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.